The Ajax program has become one of those rare defense stories where the platform's reputation is almost louder than its engine. Years of delays, public criticism, and a lingering sense that the British Army bought a promise and got a problem. And now, right as that scandal noise has cooled down, a new image pops up. Ajax, wearing a Finnish Patria Nemo 120mm mortar turret, shown by GDLS UK as a fresh, self-propelled mortar concept at International Armoured Vehicles 2026. On paper, it looks like a redemption arc. In practice, it raises a sharper question. Is this a smart attempt to salvage a troubled chassis or just a slick prototype trying to outrun the program's baggage? Let's start with why this pairing is even being floated. A self-propelled mortar is one of the most brutally practical tools on a modern battlefield. It is indirect fire that can travel with the maneuver force, deploy quickly, deliver a short, intense burst of rounds, and then relocate before counter-battery fire or drones pinpoint the position. That shoot-and-scoot concept is not new, but the need for it is exploding because the front line today is not just being watched by radars and observers. It's being watched by persistent, cheap, and expendable eyes in the sky. If you can't move quickly, hide effectively, and fire fast, you don't survive long. That's where NEMO comes in. Patria's turreted mortar module is designed to automate as much of the firing process as possible, pushing mortar work away from the old model of exposed crews, open hatches, and frantic manual loading. The system is remotely operated and unmanned in the turret, and it's marketed around the idea that a small crew can deliver serious firepower with high responsiveness. The numbers are the headline. Up to 10 rounds per minute at maximum, around 6 per minute sustained, with a crew of about 3 running the whole vehicle. That's not just convenience, that's survivability, because fewer people need to be outside, fewer people need to be clustered around a firing point, and fewer seconds are wasted between target acquired and rounds out. So why put it on Ajax? Why not stick it on the wheeled platforms where Nemo already makes visual sense, like Patria's own 6x6 or AMV families or other wheeled APCs that can mount a two-ton class turret? Because tracked mobility still matters in exactly the kind of terrain where battles bog down when the ground turns into mud, when off-road routes become the only safe routes, when you need to keep up with tracked infantry fighting vehicles through churned up fields and cratered forest lines, a wheeled mortar carrier can be fast on roads and suddenly clumsy everywhere else. A tracked, self-propelled mortar can go where the brigade goes, not where the road permits. And that's the first seduction of this concept. Ajax is already meant to be a tracked reconnaissance and combat vehicle family with modern electronics and protected mobility. If you can turn it into an indirect fire asset, you're not just creating a new variant. You're potentially creating a way to make the whole fleet more relevant by giving it a role that is constantly in demand. Recon vehicles are important, but indirect fire is a daily currency of war. But then comes the uncomfortable part. Ajax is not just a tracked platform, it is a platform with a very specific reputation. The problems that made Ajax notorious weren't cosmetic, they were about reliability, usability, and the kind of this will hurt you over time issues that destroy confidence in the field, and that matters more than brochure performance. You can have the best turret in Europe, but if the base vehicle struggles with availability, maintenance, or basic soldier acceptance, your mortar battalion is not getting a miracle. It's getting a new shape of the same headache. That's why those photos matter. Observers immediately notice something visually telling. The Nemo turret looks almost small on the Ajax hull. That isn't an insult to Nemo. It's a reminder that the turret was designed to be light enough for wheeled armored carriers and even boats, while Ajax is a larger track chassis. The mismatch can be an advantage because a heavier base vehicle can absorb recoil forces more comfortably, carry more ammunition and potentially offer better protection and cross-country stability while firing. But it also hints at a procurement logic that's less romantic. When you have a big platform searching for a convincing mission, almost any useful looking turret can become a pitch deck. Now let's talk about what integration actually means, because this is where prototypes go to die. Putting a turret on a hull is not like swapping a Lego piece. A turreted mortar needs structural reinforcement around the turret ring, carefully managed recoil loads, space for ammunition stowage that doesn't turn into a catastrophic hazard, and a fire control system that talks cleanly to the vehicle's sensors, navigation, and communications. The mortar's effectiveness depends on being able to shoot accurately from short halts, quickly compute firing data, and synchronize with observers and drones without delays and confusion. If that digital integration is clunky, your fancy automated turret becomes a slow manual weapon with extra steps. Then there's protection, and this is where the concept gets strategically awkward. Nemo's turret is not a main battle tank turret. Its baseline protection is not meant to tank direct hits. On a battlefield saturated with loitering munitions and FPV drones, top attack threats and fragmentation are the daily reality. 
So the obvious question is, does this Ajax-mounted Nemo get additional armor, counter drone measures, signature reduction, or active protection? If it doesn't, the crew benefit of operating remotely is real, but the vehicle may still be an expensive target that is too visible, too valuable, and too hard to hide once the enemy starts hunting. And hunting is the key word. In Ukraine, mortars are not just weapons, they are routines. They work from prepared positions, hidden lines, and rehearsed firing points, often with overhead cover, camouflage, and decoys. Mobility still matters, but it's not the old fantasy of driving up, firing, and disappearing like nothing happened. Drones complicate everything. If the sky is watching, shoot and scoot is less about speed and more about deception, emission control, and operating as part of a wider survival system that includes electronic warfare, air defense, and disciplined procedures. So where does a tracked, turreted mortar fit? It can fit beautifully, if you treat it as a node in a combined arms network. Imagine a unit that receives target coordinates from a UAV, fires a short burst, relocates behind terrain masking, and uses smoke, decoys, and jammer coverage to reduce the odds of being followed. In that context, Nemo's high rate of fire and reduced crew exposure are valuable. The crew doesn't need to open up and handle rounds in the open for long. The vehicle can spend less time in the I am here and I am firing posture that invites a drone strike. But if you treat it as a standalone solution, it becomes a shiny target. And that circles back to Ajax itself. A concept vehicle at an expo is not a contract, and it's not a guarantee of adoption. It's a proposal, a signal, and sometimes a negotiation tactic. GDLS UK can show a credible mortar variant and say, in effect, look, this platform can do more than you think. That message is aimed at decision makers who are tired of hearing about what Ajax can do. The pitch is not just capability, it's relevance. Still, relevance is not the same as readiness. Even if the mortar variant makes sense doctrinally, it inherits the core question that has haunted Ajax from the beginning. Can this platform be trusted, fielded at scale, and sustained without bleeding time and money? Because a mortar unit cannot afford unreliable vehicles. Indirect fire support is a promise you make to the maneuver force. When infantry or armor commits, they commit with the assumption that fires will arrive on time. If your mortar carriers are down for maintenance, your brigade doesn't just lose firepower, it loses confidence. And then comes the strategic irony. If Ajax truly is considered by some as a program that could still face drastic cuts or even abandonment, what does it mean to build a new variant on that foundation? Is it a clever way to justify keeping the fleet by diversifying roles? Or is it simply expanding the footprint of a troubled procurement decision? If the base hull remains controversial, every new variant is not just a capability increase, it's an additional political and logistical commitment. So does Ajax plus Nemo help? It can, but only if the hard problems are treated as the main story, not the footnote. The turret is the easy part to photograph. The battlefield is the hard part to satisfy. If GDLS UK and any potential customer can prove that the vehicle is reliable, that the integrated fire control is fast and robust, that protection against drone era threats is taken seriously, and that the concept fits real tactics rather than marketing slides, then this could actually become one of the more practical second chances we've seen in modern armored development. A tracked automated 120mm mortar that keeps crews under armor and delivers responsive fires is not a gimmick, it's a serious tool. But if Ajax's underlying issues remain unresolved, then this is just another attempt to put a strong turret on a weak narrative hoping the new silhouette distracts from the old problems, and that's the real test. Is this a new capability built on a stable foundation or a new costume on a platform still searching for credibility? Keep an eye on whether this concept becomes a funded requirement and not just an expo headline because in defense procurement the gap between can be shown and can be fielded is where most dreams go quietly to scrap.